Does this change your ability to fade the ball? Fade it? Yeah. Can you fade it or pull it? In? How much would you like me to fade it? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you able to move the ball just as easily from this new position? Through the eye of a needle. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You can see the PGA on TV. <laughs> No, it doesn't, no, the reason is, <clears throat> like, I can take a neutral club right here and open it at one degree, all things being equal, I'm going to put the smash on that ball the same way, except it's going to leave a little bit with an open face, so that I could do it that way. That would be one way, like this. And have a little slight three-yard fade there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Maybe two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's counting? <laughs> or I could take it and maybe just turn it. I'm talking a half a degree and grip it normal. And, and everything being equal, put the same amount of plow in. We call it plow. You just plow it into it. And the club, would, the club face would leave a half a degree closed at separation. So, any more questions yes. from the right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, some of us were there greenside on 18 when you clutched a piece of shepherd's pie from Monty in 95. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. there. If you could show us if there's any difference between 1995 elk at Ribby and 2011 elk at Ribby. You're well, better, I'm much, you're, I'm much, you're better looking. I'm much better now. looking now. <laughs> <laughs> um, 95 was an unreal year for me. I, I had a close call just previously that at the British Open, so I was playing on pretty much, you know, and I'd already won, and I'd done a, I'd, I'd had a good year. Um, you know, it's hard to describe all that, to be honest with you. Um, I've never been very good at duplicating what I've been trying, to, what I did to win a tournament. As soon as I win a tournament, I try to duplicate what that felt like. I always finish up going into where I can't play at all. So I learned from Jackie Burke, and I learned from... <coughs> Jackie Burke talking to Hogan, at the moment, one of our videos at Jackie Burke's is so popular in the dirt was uh, that I, I, I go by as one of my mantras is Hogan had two circles. He had an insecure circle and a secure circle, okay? When he won a tournament, he was secure. Everything was secure and everything felt good. The moment he got secure, he went back to insecure. He wanted to be unaware like an animal in the jungle. He wanted things, he wanted to know that everything was going to break. He loved to stay in that insecure circle. I've always found the same way. As soon as I get feeling really good about my game, and I let my guard down, that's when something, the wheel comes off. So I try to stay with that. Uh, so to try to answer your question, um, I feel good about my game just because I know more. Back in 95, Terry was with me. I was working on, I'd come from, I'd come from the British Open, which everyone knows at St. Andrews, you had to hit a draw really big draw was the best shot at St. Andrews. So I was drawing it big. I got over here with him and we practiced for a week on doing the opposite of what I was just trying to do there because I knew Ribby was fade. So whatever I was working on that week at St. Andrews, I tried to reverse that. If I was trying to do that, I tried to do that. And I finished up just hitting a bullet fade all week. And uh, you know, the thing about that was I led the I led the week to win for me to win the PGA. I, I led the fairways hit, greens hit, least amount of putts, least amount of total putts, sand bunker saves. I led number one in all categories. And there's one guy who tied me, and the only way I shook him off was make another birdie. So it's really tight up there on the top of those deals. Tight. When I looked at those stats, I would have I would have really liked to have seen me like. 25th in putting or something, where I had a little threshold there, but there wasn't any left. It was I was at the top of all the stats that week, so I I know that you know they're hard to win. The major championships are, are hard to win. And, you know, there's, there's just no two ways about it. it. Seems like more now because of course it's get more difficult, more difficult, etc. But I still, that being said, I still I still think the guys that have the experience have the advantage over the young guys every time. There's no way an old fisherman gets beat out by a young fisherman, hardly ever. And if the old fisherman's wary, he knows what's going on, he knows what he's doing, like I feel like an old fisherman, I'm not gonna get beat out by a young guy.
I'll take him out. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> How's my, how am I looking? Mike, well, where, where's your drive at? I just want to get past you. Right? I'm green. I, you know, I need my fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going in, man. I'm going up like that. And I'm going that way. I'm, I'm, I'm never coming down. I'm staying. I'm going that way. Never coming down. So delayed, right? So delayed. Just so, so, uh, so nice to hit the ball that way. To be honest with you, I'm no different than you guys. I like to hit the ball well when I go to play golf. <laughs> my, my well is probably better than your well. That's cool, but I still don't like, I don't like to hit the ball bad. Okay, Mike. <laughs>